JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFT's weekly market outlook webinar for the week March the 23rd until March the 27th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFT and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer first. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our uh, analysis. So for another week, uh, the main theme is likely to be the coronavirus. Um, data may be put aside as they have been recently, but uh, given that we get a few this week, um, uh, I will talk about uh, the most important ones. We get the PMIs for March. It would be interesting to see how how deep the damage is from the coronavirus. We get the UK CPIs ahead of the Bank of England policy decision. The CPIs are coming out on Wednesday and the Bank of England decision is on Thursday. And on Friday, we get the US personal income and spending data uh, uh, for February alongside the core PCE year over year rate, which is the Fed's favorite inflation metric. So let's start with Monday. Uh, Monday appears to be a very light day in terms of, uh, of economic indicators and scheduled events as uh, there are no top tier releases on the economic agenda. However, investors are likely to stay on the edge of their seats as uh, the theme that's been driving the markets recently has not been data but headlines surrounding the spreading of the coronavirus. With both new infected cases and new deaths keep hitting record highs every day, and more nations entering lockdown mode, we stick to our guns that the worst is not behind us yet. Therefore, despite the equity rebound we saw on uh, Thursday and uh, during the Asian uh, European session uh, Friday, um, we, we investors may be more than willing to abandon again risk assets and seek shelter in safe havens, and especially the greenback. I will explain in a while why the greenback. Indeed, we can see here that the US markets closed in the red uh, on Friday with the negative sentiment rolling into the Asian session uh, today. As for why we expect the US dollar to continue outperforming even the traditional safe havens, yen and uh, Swiss franc, it's because it appears to be the refuge in extremely turbulent market conditions. You can see that last week it, it outperformed all the other G10 currencies. Now with the uh, with the VIX index or the fear index hovering uh, slightly below the 2008 uh, crisis peak, this is the 2008 crisis peak, this is where the index stands now. Uh, we saw the VIX surpassing that peak last week, but given that I have weekly data, he weekly data here, we cannot see uh, the uh, we cannot see that spike, uh, given that we get uh, weekly closings. Uh, the line here connects weekly closing prices. In any case, uh, with the VIX hovering near the 2008 crisis peak, no one can doubt that the, that the phase we are going through is a turbulent one. Now, in a leveraged world, market participants may continue liquidating positions everywhere, even in safe havens like gold, in order to cover losses and margin calls resulting from hoarding riskier assets, like equities and risk-linked currencies. In order uh, for us to change our view, we would like to see headlines that a vac uh, vaccine is ready for distribution to the whole world. Now, with regards to, to Tuesday, Tuesday is a PMI, a PMI day. During the European morning, we get the preliminary manufacturing and services prints from several Eurozone nations and the bloc as a whole. The Euro Area Manufacturing Index is forecast to have fallen to 39 from 49.2, while the services one is anticipated to have slumped to 38.4 from 52.6. This will drive the composite index down to 37.8 from 51.6. We get preliminary PMIs for March from the UK as well, 
but no forecasts are currently available. Uh, the nation's CBI industrial trend orders for the month are also coming out and the forecast points to a decline further into the negative territory. Specifically, the index is expected to have slid to minus 30 from minus 18 in uh, February. Now later uh, in the day we get the US preliminary PMIs for March. The manufacturing index is expected to have declined to 43 from 50, while the services one is anticipated to have slid to 42 from 49.4. The home sales for February are, are also due to be released and the forecast points to a 2.3% month over month decline after a 7.9% increase in January. Now, the fact that all the PMIs are forecast to have tumbled well into the contractionary territory is not a surprise and such slumps may not prove major market movers this time around. Uh, with the virus spreading extremely fast outside China during the, during the month of March, investors are, are already prepared for economic consequences uh, during the first quarter of the year. The big question is whether the wounds will, would get uh, deeper during the second quarter. As we have been repeatedly noting, we, we do expect the damages to drag into the second quarter. With no vaccine ready to be distributed yet, nations are likely to maintain and even tighten their, their uh, restrictive measures, something that inevitably may continue hurting economic activity. Now on Wednesday, uh, during the Asian morning, we had an RBNZ monetary policy meeting. However, given that the bank decided to act outside the scheduled gathering, slashing its benchmark interest rate by 75 basis points last Monday, uh, this gathering has been uh, cancelled. We do get, though, uh, the, nation's, uh, the nation's trade balance for February, but no forecast is currently available. Now, during the European morning, we get the German IFO survey for March. Both the current uh, assessment and expectations indices are expected to have declined to 93.6 and 81.8 from 99 and 93.2 respectively, something that could uh, drive the business climate index down to 87.5 from 96. With both the ZW current conditions and economic sentiment indices for the month tumbling by more than expected last week, we wouldn't be surprised if uh, the IFO prints miss their estimates as well. From the UK, we get uh, the inflation data for uh, February. Both the headline and core CPI rates are forecast to have declined to 1.6% year over year and 1.5% year over year from 1.8 and 1.6% respectively. Uh, in a coordinated attempt to prevent a global, a global economic recession, central banks and governments have been ramping up their stimulus efforts. Uh, specifically, in this case, the Bank of England cut rates on March 11th by 50 basis points to 0.25% and reduced them even further last Thursday from 0.25% to 0.1%, also reinitiating QE purchases. Thus, it would be interesting to see whether slowing inflation will be the icing on the cake for the bank to cut rates to zero the following day. We have a Bank of England uh, meeting on Thursday, although our own view is for no further cuts uh, this week. Now, in the US, we get durable goods orders for February. Both the headline and core rates are expected to have, uh, to have slid to minus 0.8% month over month and minus 0.3% month over month. Uh, respectively from minus 0.2% and plus 0.8%. Uh, uh, the case for lower durable goods uh, rates is supported by the new order sub-index of the ISM manufacturing PMI for the month, which uh, slid to 49.8 from uh, 52. Now on Thursday, as I already mentioned, the main event may be the Bank of England monetary policy decision. As we already noted, it would be interesting to see whether the bank will decide to cut rates to zero. However, with the bank already cutting rates twice this month and also signaling a restart of QE purchases, we don't expect officials to push the cut button at this gathering. We believe that they will stand uh, ready to do so if needed, but with little ammunition left, they may be careful with regards to the timing of further easing. Another reason why we, we expect policymakers to, to wait for a while before and if they decide to act again is the Chancellor's announcement over a large fiscal spending package. Now, apart from the Bank of England uh, meeting, we also have the UK retail sales for February. 
Headline sales, are, headline sales are anticipated to have slowed to 0.2% from 0.9%, while core sales are forecast to have declined 0.1% month over month after rising 1.6% in January. Such prints will leave the headline year over year rate unchanged as 0.8%, while they will push the core one just a tick down to 1.1% year over year from 1.2%. That said, bearing in mind that the year-over-year -year rate of the BRC retail sales monitor slid to minus 0.4% from 0%, uh, we would consider the risks of the official retail sales forecasts as tilted to the downside. Now from the US, we get the final GDP for the fourth quarter, which is expected to confirm its second estimate, namely that the US economy grew 2.1% quarter-over-quarter seasonally adjusted annual rate. Uh, during the last three months of uh, 2019. Now, in any case, barring any major deviations uh, from the forecast, we expect uh, this release to pass unnoticed. After all, we have models pointing to how the economy has been performing during the first quarter of the of the year of this year, uh, during which the outbreak of the coronavirus happened, and thus investors may be more interested on data concerning uh, that period. Surprisingly, the Atlanta Fed GDP Now model points to a 3.1% growth rate, but the New York Now cast suggests a slowdown to 1.4%. Having in mind how turbulent this quarter has been, we lean towards the New York model, but in any case, we will have to wait for the actual data to confirm whether and how much was the economy hurt. Now, finally, on Friday, during the Asian morning, uh, Japan releases the Tokyo CPIs for March. No forecast is currently available for the headline rate, but the core one is anticipated to have ticked down to 0.4% year over year from 0.5%. Later in the day from the US, we get uh, personal income and spending data for, fe for February alongside the core PCE year over year rate for the month. Personal income is forecast to have slowed to 0.4% month over month from 0.6%, something supported by the slide of the average hourly earnings uh, month over month rate um, for the month of February. While personal spending is anticipated to have grown 0.2%, the same pace as in January. That said, bearing in mind um, that uh, retail sales for the month uh, slid 0.5%, we see the risks surrounding the spending forecast as tilted to the downside. With regards to the core PCE uh, rate, which is the Fed's, if, which, which is the Fed's uh, favorite inflation metric, it is expected to have ticked up to 1.7% year over year from 1.6%. Now, having said all that though, we don't expect these data sets to alter expectations around monetary policy. The Fed and other major central banks have been in a coordinated rescue mission, easing massively their respective policies in order to prevent the global economy from falling into recession, or at least to recover as quickly as possible in case it does fall into recession. Thus, economic data may have been put aside for now, with investors uh, not paying the attention they would have under normal circumstances. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and, uh, and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around uh, 8.30 a.m. GMT time. So goodbye from me and have a nice uh, day. JFT, just fair and direct.